Cheech with Fly Fish Food here, and we have an awesome hen saddle from Whiting Farms. It's only 20 bucks. A lot of people don't know that you can tie really clean woolly buggers with this stuff. Check it out. All right, this is a very cool little bug. Um, it's a hen bugger. So we're using a Whiting Red Label hen saddle. So it's just a brown hen saddle. It's natural, no dye, but these are really cool feathers because they have a little taper to them. When you put them on smallish buggers, they look like that. Just really cool looking little bugs. Excellent for still water fishing. And also, those saddles are only 20 bucks. That's a lot of buggers in there. All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna tie what I'm calling a hen bugger. I'm sure that many other people have done this. Yes, it is just a woolly bugger. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's tie this bad boy. I've got a 2X long size eight hook, 140 denier thread in uh, brown. You could also do like a bright orange, that would be pretty cool. And we'll keep it simple. This is just Wooly Bugger Marabou right here from Hairline. You can see how nice and flowy it is. So what I'm gonna do, I got rid of some of the fluff on the bottom. I'm just gonna grab a pinch about like that and another pinch about like that. Boom. Grab those with my fingers and that's gonna be our tail for this fly. I want the tail to be pretty long, about like that. So I'm gonna cut off the excess I'm going to use my thumbnail to pull out the excess fibers. Kudos to my good buddy Davey McPhail for teaching me that technique. You could even use this little marabou fluff as dubbing. Hint, hint. All right, so because I did that, these will tie down so small that it's barely bigger than the thread. So now we're still working with a really clean surface to build that woolly bugger on. I also don't like that I didn't go very far back, so I'm just going to take the time now to just advance my thread back to where it should be, right there. All right, cool. So next step is farm out a piece of hackle. I don't want the barbs to be super long. Let's see. That's a good one right there. <clears throat> So that's the one that I've chosen. If I splay it out, you can see that they're not very, very long. It'll work great with this little size eight hook. So I'm gonna tie that in by the tip and just tie it in right there. Wrap that down. So again, we're still nice and smooth. A little bit of a bump in the back, but that's not gonna be that big of a deal. Then I'm gonna use a really cool dubbing called Voodoo Streamer Dub from Fulling Mill. It's kind of a seal substitute, kind of like semi-seal, a little bit different feel to it. Um, but this is really, really awesome stuff with this. You could also use your favorite um, ice dub or you could just use chenille if you wanted. But we're just gonna make a, a pretty sparse dubbing loop out of this. Um, so I'll spin that loop up, take my thread to the front and then pull out favorite dubbing twister. Now watch this. See this man? Uh-oh. One of one. Sorry, guys. I just had to flex there, but I'm pretty proud of it. Anyway, uh, I want to make a really sparse dubbing loop out of this cool voodoo dub. This is a color called dark brown copper UV, and uh, it's got some spicy, spicy highlights to it. Right, Brig? He said, yeah. Correct. Okay. So here I've got this. I'm going to twist up that dubbing loop. Some marabou tried to join the party, so we're just going to tell him to go home. Not welcome here. And we're going to just barely brush this out, just a tiny little bit. Okay, so if your dubbing loop is much thicker than that, um, it's going to create a lot of bulk. So thin out that dubbing loop. Don't overdo it. Anyway, we'll just wrap that forward. Just like that. 
and we will cut that off. Alright, and because I don't want that to unravel, I'm just going to throw a quick whip finish in that, and I'm going to brush it out just a little bit. Now I'll take this hackle, and I'm going to wrap that right down through there. And yes, you can take a wire and wrap it through this counterclock or the opposite direction you wrap the hackle if you want for more durability. You know what? So what I did there is I put too many turns of hackle on, no big deal. I'm just going to space out my hackle turns on this and remember that I got a really thick dubbing body that will Creep some bulk too. All right, so here we go. Just tie that bad boy off. And from here, I can just pull everything back and really lock down that tie in and create the head at the same time. And then just pull that feather back on top of itself to break it off. All right, almost done. We'll whip finish that. Nice little shaped head. And then Gently brush that out just to pull some of those dubbing fibers through the hackle. We'll get all sides and then use your brush to kind of preen the, the bugger back. There are all kinds of colors of this dubbing. The brown goes with a whole bunch of different colors, so make these, you know, your own. But there you go. There's a little hen bugger that is ready to smoke some fish.